Well, hi there. Do you know my favorite part about recording an hour long YouTube video? Is finding out that my camera recorded this most of it. That that's that's how much of the video. I just so this was all filled in from another video of me schizophrenically talking to myself. <laughs> all right, so welcome to version two of this video. All right, so today we are going to be discussing. 10 tips about starting and running your own training group. All right, let's get into it. <sighs> okay, so tip number one is going to be sending dudes. And by sending dudes, I mean that I host a Telegram channel with over 8,000 subscribers that anyone can join and follow on my weekly antics. So a lot of marketing for my company. But on Mondays, uh, we do location check-ins. So if you are nowhere near me, uh, we have location check-ins where you go on a telegram, you post up your nearest major city, and then you can message people that are near you to try to link up and train with them. We have already had numerous reports of training groups that have started up because of our location check-ins. As well as location check-ins every Monday, you're going to have the availability to also comment on my open events posts um, and then you will get added into a open events chat where you'll get information to come out to my open events here in the Pacific Northwest. So if this is not a option that you want to go for, if the internet is not something that you, you know, inherently trust, that is perfectly fine. We have some other options for you. So we have churches, we have gyms, and then colleges. Uh, if the military industrial complex can recruit from colleges, so can you. Uh, don't be a fucking weirdo about it though comes to recruiting, when it comes to trying to, I, I realize recruiting is technically, uh, well, recruiting is uh, also an, a different subsection later, so we'll get more into this. Um, but as far as trying to start your own training group, um, the, the best bet that I can have, or the best, you know, bet, the uh, uh, best advice I can have is friends that you already have, people that are in your family, people at church, people at your local gym, because, oh wow, they're already training. If you're going to college, uh, don't just go to a random college and try and start recruiting. Uh, but the biggest thing is just trying to talk to people and be like, hey, do you wanna go out in the mountains and go on a hike? Because that's really all training starts out as, is just physical fitness stuff, well, hitting the range. For a lot of people though, hitting the range right off the bat is seen as kind of it's like, I don't know you. Anyway, number two that we're gonna go into is going to be OPSEC. And by OPSEC, I specifically mean your ability to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. When you are training, when you are linking up with new guys, so let's say uh, stage two is you are already at a open training event or your first training event, or hell, your guys' first meet up, your first link up. Um, the biggest rule that I like to give out to guys is that you do not want to be the one that is talking the most. If anything, you want to be a little bit more of the quiet and reserved guys. You're only talking about yourself when you are asked about yourself. Um, shutting the fuck up is a incredible, incredible skill. Um, and this is going to lead us into point number three, which is called masking. So if you guys are not aware of, or if you've never been around anyone on the autism spectrum, uh, masking is what is formally known as trying to blend in or putting on a mask and trying to act more normal. Um, so masking is going to be just as important as finding friends as it is finding a girlfriend of uh, you. Um, there was a, a fantastic movie um, that had a, a quote on this and I want to say it was Hitch with Will Smith. Yeah, it, it was. Um, 
where he goes into, you want to give them the real you. You want to present to them who you are, just not all at once and not right away. You don't want to just come out the gate being like, hey, by the way, I'm a fucking schizophrenic psychopath. Not the best approach, right? Um, also, in the topic of masking, not the best approach uh, at an open event to be discussing with men that you've never met before that you know how to make nuclear bombs and that you can make a nuclear bomb in your living room. Probably not a good thing to talk about. We've had quite a few people come out to open events that do not know how to do this and they're so intolerable, they are so painful to be around that it's a simple, all right, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, this isn't the group for you, uh, you know, uh, peace. Everyone needs to do this. We're gonna go over this a little bit further uh, in this uh, write-up. Uh, who do you wanna be around? What kind of people do you want to gravitate? What kind of people are you wanting in your training group, your shit hits the fan, survival group, uh, your militia? You want to try to blend in, which is hilarious because like I, I go into this topic here in a little bit, but you want to try to blend in and you know, don't come across as an, like, an asshole. Uh, don't come across as like just this unhinged spurg. Uh, one of the best rules that I ever heard was that if you're looking for, if you go into a room and you're looking for that guy and you can't find that guy, it means that it's you. If you can't find the annoying guy that won't shut the fuck up, it's probably you. So, shut the fuck up. Which, wow, that goes right back up near. Okay, so, you found a group of a couple of guys that you like and maybe, you know, you're starting to hang out a little bit more. Maybe you're starting hitting the, hitting the hills and you guys are going on hikes and maybe you've gone on the, to the range a few times. Maybe you guys have, have hung out and done PT a couple of times, done a few workouts, uh, maybe hit the gym together. And the, another thing uh, with the training calendar that I also have want to throw in here before this, when you are recruiting, do your absolute best to try and find guys as close to you as possible. Now, there's nothing wrong with the guys that you know want to drive like six hours. And yeah, hell, I've I've driven a multiple, hell, I've flown to the other side of the country to train with people. Well, if you want to train with someone, you will find out a way, you, you, will, you will get there. Money's expensive, so trying to find guys as close to you as possible is going to be beneficial but if you can't find guys that are in your town sometimes you're gonna have to drive save your money it is what it is uh, training calendar so you guys want to create some kind of training calendar you guys are gonna want to sit down with the dudes in your group or or you know whatever you want to call yourself and you want to sit down and go all right, I'm free on this weekend, I'm free on this weekend, I'm free on this weekend, what about you guys? What we like to do is set up every other weekends, um, and that's what we train, and we just you know make sure that we have a set plan for each one of those training events, um, and then we mesh in open events with our closed events as well. Um, to go next into a op order, if you guys do not know what an op order is, I would highly recommend looking one up. I am not going to go over everything that is in an op order. If you guys are interested, if you guys like this concept, if you guys like hearing about this, please by all means hit up the comments, ask questions, and I can do uh, I can do a video going over logistical questions. Thing that I would not be hesitant uh, to talk about at all. So the op order is going to be your who, what, when, where, why. Very important for your training events to make sure that you guys are training things that you actually think are valuable skills. And by no means does a training event have to be tactical based. The event could literally be gathering your family, your friends, your loved ones, uh, the, the loved ones and family of men that you're training with and just learning legitimate skills, going over gardening, going over pottery, uh, how to grow potatoes, uh, canning. You know, there, there's so many things that you can train and go over that's not tactical. Like not, uh, hell, every single part of this doesn't have to be tactical. This could all be 100% survival oriented, especially if you're not in the continental United States and you don't have access to firearms as much as we do. Next bullet point is gonna be number five, and we have background checks and interviews. Uh, so the interview is going to go a little bit into, oh, that's right, that wasn't a bullet point I talked about in the last video. Um, 
once you guys are getting a little bit more serious, once you guys have dedicated that like, hey, these are the guys that I wanna be around, these are the guys that I wanna train, knowing who you are training with, knowing who you are around, potentially be very beneficial to you. Uh, especially, you know, it comes comes down the pipeline or you guys get outed or, or what have you and one of the guys in your group is just has just done some like fucked up, just absolutely disgusting, degenerate, just horrible things and what, this is one of your buddies? This is one of your pals? It's like, what, you've, you've been training with him for the last year, why didn't you know this? Doing interviews and doing background checks are fairly unimportant, or you can join ODGG. This is something that you have to go through with us. This is part of our pre-selection phase, so if you come out to an open event and we like you, you get a ticket, and then you can come to the pre-selection, which is going to be a, uh, we'll already have a background check for you that you have uh, signed off and we're gonna pay for it, you know, what have you, but we're gonna do the background check, we're gonna host an interview, and then a PT test that includes a ruck march as well, um, and you're also gonna have to give a class. Um, just trying to make sure that you guys are, uh, you know, actually about this shit. To our four day selection course, which is in July. If you'd like to more, know more about that, go ahead and join my Telegram, which, you know, if you're not in my Telegram, what are you even doing? Uh, Monday location check-ins. Okay, so. Uh, next, we are going to go into feds, which loops all the way back into shutting the fuck up in OPSEC. Okay, so here is the simple fact um, that no one can get away from, that no one can deny. Uh, it, it just, it is what it is. The federal government exists. No way. CIs and federal informants exist. Agents, federal informants, and CIs absolutely exist. Uh, federal agents you know, have leverage on someone. They want uh, more information about your group or they think that maybe you guys are doing nefarious things. Um, and then they send somebody to your group to just get information. And if they find out that you guys are doing nefarious things and then, then you guys get investigated. Um, which happens. It happens all the fucking time and you hear about it all the time. Um, which uh, my, my number one, my best thing that I can possibly tell you to prevent you guys being infiltrated uh, by feds and federal informants, uh, no matter what you're doing, no matter how legal you guys are going, uh, the best thing that you can possibly do about this is shut the fuck up. Look at that. Um, OPSEC is going to be your best bet. Uh, just don't talk about doing illegal things. Don't do illegal things. If you're gonna do illegal things, don't fucking talk about them. Don't brag about them. Don't tell people uh, about it. Just don't talk about it. If you've done anything illegal that you're aware of, just don't fucking tell anybody. Just shut the fuck up. Literally just shut the fuck up and that solves that. Um, so um, you guys are, are going to have the federal government watching over you if you start a training group. It's, it's just going to happen. Join my Telegram chat, you're probably gonna have federal agents watching over you. Not just federal agents, but we're actually gonna skip ahead just a little bit uh, into drama and infighting. At point nine, I'm actually more worried about than, uh, than I am feds of, of just nefarious people wanting to come into my group. Information, take photos, go back to their group. Or, or maybe they just want to see me burn or what have you. I'm more worried about people that see me ill will because they think that I'm some evil, horrible person. You know, Antifa has infiltrated groups. Uh, they've gotten intel on guys and then they find out where you live, dox you, and then the next George Floyd riots pop off, your address is already out there, and if you haven't moved, you might be getting a visit. I'm more worried about the drama and infighting and you know unhinged people than I am the federal government. Now, I realize that's a weird take. Honestly, I think that the feds are more predictable than, uh, than people in my own community which is kind of fucking pathetic to have to say, but you know, it is what it is. When it comes to, uh, you know, feds and informants and, and whatnot, doing your best to try to stay as legal as possible. Um, and you know, honestly, when it comes to like, uh, like SBRs and when it comes to form fours, so form ones and form fours, it's honestly a lot easier just to go the legal route anyway, because then you have all of the, uh, the customer service um, from going the legal route. As, as you know, turbo gay as that might sound, there is a lot of benefits actually to going the legal route and being able to send your products in to get maintenance. I've already had to send in one of my suppressors and I got it back within two weeks. A baffle strike, a dead air returned it in two weeks and I'm very happy that I went the legal route and I 
I was able to have that customer service when something went wrong, because you know things do go wrong. Uh, just something to think about. Uh, so last thing that I want to say before that is OPSEC, shut the fuck up and don't do illegal shit. Next, uh, where? So where are you guys going and what are the laws of where you guys are going? So you know, let's say that if I was hosting an open training event and it w we were going to be rucking on you know more established like hiking trails uh, where more normies are going to be, so not a national forest, then yeah, I'm probably not gonna do rifles and kit. Um, if we're going out far out in the mountains, right, where it's national forest and I know that we're not gonna get bugged and you know that, that there's, uh, there's no legal ramifications from being out in the hills, then yeah, rifle, full kit, what have you. But the, uh, the wear of the training event, that's gonna come down into your training calendar of where are you guys going, what are the laws there, what are the considerations that you have to take um, into account for. So with your training calendar, or with your op order, this is going to be under uh, the probably the commander's intent of uh, logistical considerations. Next is going to be recruiting and networking. So let's say that your group is already established, uh, your training group, your militia, your uh, you know uh, varsity team, uh, whatever. Uh, you guys are already established. How are you guys going to recruit? How are you guys going to network? Um, so are you guys going to be you know solo? Are you guys only going to train internally, or are you going to train with other groups? Are you going to allow your members to train with other groups? Uh, you know maybe a potential conflict of interest. Um, are you guys gonna allow in, you know, and that's another thing when it comes to recruiting. Uh, what kind of demographic are you guys trying to appease to? Uh, what kind of people do you want with you? Are you gonna allow fat bodies? Um, or do you want them for logistical consideration, or uh, more logistics, right? Um, you, got, you always are gonna have to have people on like fire guard watch, you're gonna have to have people watching the vehicles, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna want to have someone driving a fallout truck if you're doing rucking and what have you, uh, you know, more movement. Um, having a cook isn't a bad thing, you guys need to have medical, not only medical supplies, but people trained in medical. Um, so networking, recruiting, whatnot, uh, you know, what kind of people are you looking for? How are you gonna get them? Um, this is gonna come back to gyms, colleges, uh, and then social media of, you know, do you wanna post your guys' training on social media and try to gravitate more people or is that bad press and that you don't want it? Uh, something you have to take into consideration. Um, you know, uh, with that as well, uh, do you guys allow uh, faces to be posted on social media? Are you guys can be on social media at all. Uh, you know, uh, th that's going to come down into the uh, the networking. You know, training with other groups or not training with other groups. Nine. So nine is actually, uh, in my opinion, probably the uh, the most important out of everything that we have here. Um, I realize that might sound weird, that might be comical to some, uh, but drama in, in fighting is actually going to be what tears down a group before any of this, in my opinion. Um, if you have ever been around a group of, uh, I don't wanna say alpha males by any fucking stretch of the imagination, but if you've ever been in a group of males that have a little bit more testosterone, uh, maybe, you know, guys that are that are on the spectrum that don't have experience being around other males as much. Um, you have guys from all kinds of different backgrounds and you guys are willingly um, signing up to be here. That, uh, that drama and infighting can get really, really interesting really, really fast. And bad things can happen, especially dependent on people's backgrounds, especially dependent on how, uh, how things uh, shake out of, you know, if one person in your group gets into an argument or gets into a feud with another person in another group, is it now group on group that you guys hate each other? Um, you have to worry about, and once again, uh, what I was talking about earlier, um, of you know people wanting to come into your group to tear you apart, to defame you, to dox you. You guys have to take in consideration. You guys probably should have, and this is gonna skip down to 10, I wanna have some sort of standard, some sort of SOP when it comes to drama and infighting. My recommendation would be if it is between two people that you tell those two people that it is their problem, that they need to uh, take it offline and deal with it themselves. It should not come to the group. Drama and infighting is also going to come down to uh, you know your your structure inside of the group. Are you going to have some sort of chain of command? Are you going to have a command team, and then you're going to have everyone else? Are you wanting to run your own group? What makes the most sense for you? Everyone does it differently. 
Uh, but Draman infighting, in my opinion, is uh, probably the most important of all of this, of, you know, are you guys getting along? Are you guys communicating? Um, if you guys have a problem, if there is an issue, uh, if something isn't going the way that you like it, is there an open door policy? Um, are people bottling up their frustrations? Uh, so much with infighting can really, really fuck up a, a group, especially if you have two people with different ideologies. They refuse to accept the, uh, you know, agree to disagree. It can be, become a problem as well. Um, so standards. We're gonna go to uh, number 10. It's going to be the standards of everything in your group. You know, uh, what kind of people are you allowing in? What kind of uh, PT standards are you guys gonna have? What kind of standards are you going to uphold if someone does something that you don't like, you don't approve of inside the group, right? You have to have some sort of standard, some sort of bylaws that are set up of like, hey, if you make three big fucky walkies and the whole group, you know, decides that you made, you know, two fucky walkies, right? And it's like, oh, you got, you got that one more and you're, you're out. Um, we have kicked out multiple people from ODGG. Um, that's the internal group as well. I've uh, told people that they are not allowed back at open events because of things that they did, things that they said. Hell, I, I had a guy try to fight me once, coming back from, from a, uh, a ruck, uh, and he was like mad at me because I forced him to ruck or, or something. I'm still very confused, but you know, we will extend out of like, hey, um, you're not allowed back because of your performance, because of your attitude. Uh, you're not the type of, you, you're not the right fit for us. You know, what kind of standards do you guys have? Are they written down? Are they established? Um, because if someone does make some sort of, you know, huge fucky walky and it's not written down, it wasn't established, they didn't know what they did was wrong, you know, that can go back on. So somehow having, having rules and standards is going to, going to be important, uh, especially for the drama and infighting. All right, 11 is going to be dues. And I realized that I said that I was gonna do 10 of these, but I kind of got ahead of myself in the last video. So, you know, here we are. Uh, 11 is going to be dues. It is going to be a monthly rate of how much you donate to the group. So that way you can all pool funds for supplies. And supplies could easily go down to, you know, uh, dumb things like uh, marker boards and markers, uh, tables, food for everyone, hem lights, batteries, pens, pencils. Uh, f I think I already said food, but food again, uh, logistical things, right? Uh, doing all of this takes money. You no longer have Uncle Sam that is just, you know, here's a blank check, you know, get out there, have at it champ. How are you guys gonna pay for all this? How are you guys gonna pay for fuel? How are you guys, um, are you going to pitch in together uh, for fuel? I mean, you're gonna have guys that are more financially better off. You guys, you're gonna have guys that are struggling. When we've had like, hey man, I can't make it out to this event. You know, I don't have the money for gas. And then the guys that are a little bit better off, they're like, oh, I, I'll, I'll spot you, uh, no big deal. You know, Venmo the uh, cash or, you know, give them cash once they get there. There's a huge thing here is that, you know, we are a team. That is the point of this, is trying to come together as a team. Comes to all of this training, right? Shit hits the fan preparedness group, might not even be for the guys that you are training with. You are coming together and you are going out in the mountains or the desert or the swamps or wherever you are, and you guys are trying to harden each other <laughs> as much as you can. You guys are trying to push yourself through uh, these different scenarios, these different situations, and you're becoming better men together. You're going through, you're purposely putting yourself through these trials, um, through these difficult times together, trying to get more skills, trying to become a better leader so that if shit pops off in your community and none of these guys are near you, you now have the skill set, you now have the experience of you know what it's like to ruck 20 miles and something wasn't quite right. Well, now you have that experience that you know, like, oh, well, I have to adjust my lift loaders. Now I've done it. Oh, I need to adjust my kidney belt. Oh, okay, well, you know, I've rucked this many miles and because of this one LP OP, I know that I react better dip in with, you know, uh, black coffee as opposed to trying to do like a zip fizz or something else like that, you know, or like, Doing all of these difficult things, doing all these challenging things is very, very important, in my opinion, to become a better man, to become more prepared. Wow, that was a huge rant on uh, dues, and that didn't even fit into dues at all. But anyway, number 12 is going to be standardization. 
So, uh, when it comes to all of the training, when it comes to firearms, when it comes to gear, uniform, rucksacks, backpacks, uh, cold weather equipment, wet weather equipment, are you guys going to standardize kit? Are you guys going to have uh, your med kits in the same place on your kit, in your pack? Are you guys going to pack your rucks similar? Are you guys going to have the same similar kit once you're out there? Are you guys going to have the same camo patterns? Are you guys going to try to be more uniform? Um, are you guys going to have the same zeros on your rifles? Are you guys going to have the same optics are you going to, on your rifles? Are you going to have the same flashlights in the same places? Um, because if I hop onto another person's gear or if I'm doing medical aid on someone, I need to know where their med kit is. Oh, it's in the same place mine is. If I hop on someone else's rifle, uh, my rifle goes down, maybe he's doing more like a spotting or something like that. He hands me off his rifle or my rifle goes down, you know, things happen. Do I, do I know his holdovers? Uh, does he have the same holdovers as me? Is he running similar optics as I am? Um, you know, the, the things like that. Now that's going, you know, like hyper specific. That's more of like a, a small based team. Like that's like special operations type things. Uh, and that might not be useful for you. That might not matter to you at all, um, and that's fine. But it's something to think about. This one is going to be uh, vehicles. This is the last topic that I have for here. Um, so when it comes to these training events, uh, how are you getting there? Are you guys going to uh, all park your vehicles at a centralized location and then ruck into wherever you're going to be? Are you sleeping out of your vehicles? Are you, if you are leaving your vehicles, uh, do you have some sort of vehicle watch? You guys park your vehicles at a centralized location and then all take one van, one bus, one truck to your location. Um, I would say having as little vehicles uh, with you as possible is probably going to be best, uh, but once again, shooter's preference. So as, uh, as far as all of this goes, for the most part, everything that I have, um, I would say that when it comes to training, when it comes to doing this, when it comes to trying to be more prepared and organized with other guys, it's not easy, it is challenging. It is stressful. There is going to be events that you really want to go to and you can't because of your own life, uh, because of your own plans. There is going to be, there's going to be drama. It's gonna happen. There's gonna be guys in the group that you don't get along with and you're just trying to grit your teeth and you're, you know, you're, you're just trying to you know, get along with them the best you can. There is, uh, there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be issues. This is not foolproof. Having a group of like-minded men is, it's difficult, it's challenging. You choose to post anything on social media, you are going to get ran through the mud for everything and anything that you do. It doesn't matter if you did it right, it doesn't matter if you did it wrong, it doesn't matter if you post that you are doing, you're just trying to do better, uh, you're gonna get run through the mud if you post anything to social media. Well, mentally, you need to understand that as well, of uh, the, uh, the, the negative feedback that you are are going to get if you post anything, if you training to social media, um, you just have to accept that. It, it just is, it is what it is, uh, nature of the beast. But yeah, everything said and done. Um, if you guys would like to know more uh, logistics, if you guys would like to understand more on logistics, if, uh, if there's anything that you didn't like here, if there's anything that you liked here, uh, please let me know in the comments. Ask me questions, uh, cause you know, videos down the road, I can do more videos on logistics, on planning, uh, what have you. I wouldn't mind going farther into creating an op order and how to do that. Um, Let's see, um, I wouldn't mind as well going over a, another video on uh, our selection course and how we host that. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. I've learned a lot taking from what worked in the military versus what works on the civilian side and kind of, you know, getting a mesh of the two. I only learned that through experience. Uh, it's something that I would like to, uh, you know, give more to you guys, but probably more uh, smaller digestible bites. So I don't wanna, you know, just like spout off hours and hours and hours of knowledge for you guys to just sit here and just, you know, brain rot. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much all I have for right now. If you guys were not tracking, I'm on Telegram, I'm on Twitter. Um, clearly I'm on YouTube because that's how you're watching this. I have a website and I have a Patreon if you guys want to support me, if you guys like what we're doing here. Again, uh, Monday check-ins, so Monday all throughout the day is going to be uh, always focused just on check-ins and just on trying to find guys in your local area. Once again, if you guys have any questions, if uh, any questions, comments, concerns, anything that you'd like to add to, by all means, please throw that in the comments. Appreciate you guys as always. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. Rifle and Mountain, Ape Together Strong, Family and Tribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, fuck! Why was that there?